So here we are with the uh, first stage of the build done. The fuselage internals. And I've been working on our second prototype. Well, it's our first actually, because obviously it's been built beforehand. Um, but this is the uh, livery of the um, limited edition aircraft that we did for the 2023 Secret Santa. Um, so the one that the other one that I'm building, which I'll show you, has a uh, different livery to this. But as you can see, we've pretty much covered most of the fuselage, and we've also got the tail feathers together too. So that's what we'll be doing in the uh, the this particular video. So um, we need the uh, the airframe that we've just built, but before uh, we start putting the fuselage skin onto that, uh, we need to prepare it somewhat. In the box, you should have a score guide, um, and it's also a bevel guide as well. So the scores are shown in red, so you can see those, and we'll uh, lay down the part onto this to do the scores. But before we do that, I'm actually going to bevel. And the bevel guide here shows all of the edges that we need to bevel and to, to what degree we need to do that as well. Not specific degrees, but um, it gives you a good idea of, uh, of how deep your bevel needs to uh, to go or how shallow it needs to be. So um, let's get the, uh, the parts on. I've already detached the uh, Z1, which is the, uh, the main part of the fuselage. And as you can see, this particular aircraft that we've got here, which is essentially the first of the, uh, the Sopwith pups, um, discounting the uh, the special edition. Um, uh, first of the Sopwith pups that we're, we, we are doing. So um, this is the livery we're using. This is Z1. <clears throat> and all of the work that I'm going to do on it is going to be done from the, uh, the underside here. So on the guide, you can see that this edge, uh, certainly on both sides, the edge there and there is beveled. And also the uh, the edges here and here bevel too, and we also get a uh, a bevel down here. But also you can see that at the moment um, there is uh, there's no shape here at all. But you can see here that this cuts in and uh, curves to the back of the aircraft with a a little indent there too. Um, if you turn the uh, part over, you'll see that it's actually scored in that particular shape. So. The reason for that is that with a knife we can get uh, a, a sharper, more accurate um, cut into the uh, into the foam. The laser, even on its lowest setting, seems to uh, to remove um, too much of the material um, to uh, to do it nice and cleanly. So um, we're leaving it up to you to uh, to cut this out. We put a little bit of a, a light score in there just to guide the uh, the knife. So uh, let's just move that to one side for now, and we can crack on with taking this out. Now I'm doing this uh, this freehand, but you could use a rule if you wanted to, just to make sure that the knife stayed on the line. There we go. Cut right up to this junction. Then I'm on the curve now. I'm just going to curve that around like so. I'm just going to exit the part and then do exactly the same on the other side. It's going to be easier if I do it like around that way. There we go. The light's better, I can see the uh, score. And now those two pieces should come out. There we go. I just need to take out that nick at the back as well. There we go. 
So probably the hardest part to uh, to score, as you can see on the guide here, it needs scoring all the way through those cuts that we've just put in, um, is getting the scores on, on the bits that we've just cut out there. So, um, but before we do, for a bit of practice, we can actually, um, we can score it pretty much by just holding onto the part, supporting it, and gen gently sanding along that line. Now, if you don't, if you want it a slightly more accurate, um, what you can do is take it to the side to an edge. I've got a small edge here um, with the uh, the two cutting mats, and then you can actually use the part right up against the edge, and then just rest the bottom of the sanding stick on the lower part of that edge. And then just move through. Just watch out at the end here, because you've got a little bit of a, a hook in the part that protrudes this material out over that edge. So you might want to sort of do as much as you can on the edge, like so. And then pick it up and then do the rest by hand. So I'm going to continue doing that edge. I'll do this edge and this edge because it's all exactly the same technique and down here too. And then I'll come back and I'll show you how I deal with this, this area here for, uh, for uh, putting the bevel in. I've uh, completed the sanding that I uh, said I was going to do. So we've got um, all the way down here. Um, these little curves here, I've also sanded up there and I've just basically just gently used the sanding stick uh, and with my finger behind the part there and just sort of scooped up like so um, on both sides. Um, used the side of the board there. Um, to actually sand the uh, the sides there and there, and also the front two portions there. Um, on these parts, I actually used the, uh, the stick and free-handed it like so. Um, it's a lot easier to do um, than trying to do that on the uh, on the side of the of the board. So like so. So. As I said, we've got a couple of areas to deal with. The majority of it now is at the back here. Um, what I'm going to do is just put the, there's some shallow bevels that go at the back edge here on both sides. And I'm going to do that. The, probably the best way to do that is, in fact, uh, to put it at the edge like so. But you've got to be very careful that you don't, you don't sand back up like that because that can crease this. Um, so when you are sanding, just sand down like that to put the edge on. Um, alternatively, you can try to uh, to hold it like so. It's not not too bad a uh, a tactic. Um, but what you tend to find is if you have it down on the board like so, there's an even pressure putting back pushing back on the part when you're sanding. Um, so that the, uh, the bevel is a little more even. So you can use a, a combination of the two really, just to, uh, to make sure everything looks good. So now that's going to be difficult for me to, uh, to sand because I'm going over that. So I'm actually going to pick this up and I'm going to do all of this by hand. And it's a much shallower bevel. The bevels on here are around about sort of 45 degrees um, because we're going to have more material butting up against them. And the less material we've got there, really the better, um, especially when we come to um, burnishing the parts, the, the corners together. So uh, I'll show you how I do that. The idea is that on the, uh, the, the bevel should be around about even on, on both sides, if at all possible. So 
that's fine. So before we go sanding down these uh, edges here, I'm going to put some scores into the uh, the part. So I'm going to use my score guide. Now you can attach this um, using a bit of uh, low tack tape if you like. Um, it's, it's quite a good tactic to keep everything in position. I'm just going to hold it. I'm just going to pop my scores in that divide the sides and the uh, and the uh, bottom of the fuselage. So to do this score, I'm using the back of the knife. And I'm using it in a shallow. I'm not going in hard like uh, like so. I'm, I'm keeping it nice and shallow. And go down a couple of times, pressing relatively hard. So that should now allow us to pick our part up and that should then bend like so. Um, so what that means is that I can actually, I can bend it the other way too, um, which then exposes the uh, the correct angle for sanding the uh, the sides. So I'm just going to hand hold it and just sand those sides down. Just put that bevel in 45 degrees. And return and do that to the other side. So I've, I've literally just done that straight edge at the moment. I haven't done the curve. So I'm going to, so I'm going to do the straight edge on the other side too. And then when it comes to the curve, I'm actually going to get my fingers underneath the uh, the curved part and then just sort of raise it up a tiny little bit just so that we can get to it and put in that bevel. Of course, I'm using the smoother side of the stat sanding stick to put the bevel in. The rougher side might uh, just be a little bit too aggressive, especially when the um, edge starts getting quite thin. Go. Right, I think we're there now. The other thing you can do while these are bent back is just sand a few times down the uh, inside of the score line. And that just takes a little bit of material off so it's actually easier to fold up. There we go. So that's our part all sanded and with the two scores put in. But as you can see, we have a few more scores to do. So let's do those. Now, you'll want to know which ones are connected to which. So um, the, uh, the the furthest one back on the fuselage is the, uh, the center one, which is the one that's by the O. 
and then it just goes back along the dotted line that way and also along the dotted line that way, referring to these lines. So it should be pretty easy to uh, to remember. Um, if not, you can always number them. So. the benefits of taping it down. <laughs> There we go. So I've got that one side scored. Now what I'm going to do is just make sure that those score lines actually fold so that they're effective. And the ones at the edges are probably the most difficult to do. There's a bit of assistance by just, what I'm doing is just trying to get it to fold using an even pressure, using the, uh, the ruler to do that, which it did. And then just roll it through. Now, don't be too keen to, to fold here because you can start creasing the fuselage. Um, we just want to make sure that uh, they will give when they are asked to, to fold around the, uh, the former the fuselage like so now you could actually if you wanted to put some more score lines into in between these um, to to try and reduce the external um, crease lines um, on there but um, I'm I'm happy with the, with that but that's fine for me so I'm going to do the other side um, get that all uh, loosened up as well and then we'll come back and uh, we'll uh, attach this to our fuselage frame. So we've got the, uh, the scores on both sides now. We've completed the uh, tasks required for Z1. So now we can start thinking about popping this onto the, uh, the fuselage frame. Get that out of the way. We'll need that later. And as you can see, there's a slot in the center of Z1, just there. <clears throat> and there's a little tab on the keel here. So I'm just going to give that a bit of a, a squeeze. I've noticed my um, my 2 mil is uh, maybe slightly over 2 mil, which isn't too much of a problem. but um, just want to make sure that that fits into the slot and we're going to dry fit this before we start gluing anything so we're looking for the tab to go into the slot 
which that does. And also at the back there, you can see that little slot that we cut out in the bottom of the fuselage skin. And that should accommodate the, uh, the tail skid. So, and then allow that skin to sit perfectly flat onto the uh, bottom of the keel there, like so. So, uh, there we go. Right. Um, I think my slot could do with a little bit of widening. No rude jokes there, please. So, I'm just going to take a little bit off either side. You might find uh, because your uh, you might find that your um, yours is fine. But just in case, if it doesn't fit, then it's worth just taking off a little bit. Make sure it does. Let's have a look. There we go. Yes, that's fine now. That just just pops in snugly. Good. So as you can see here, this section goes up to around about there. What you want to make sure is that it is pushed as far forward. If you've got a little bit of play on the tab and slot, just make sure it is pushed as far forwards as it will go. And then when you bring this all together, the top, the front edge of the part here should go right up to the plywood on the, uh, on the front of the fuselage there, which mine does there or thereabouts due to that slightly thicker two millimeter foam. Seems a bit weird calling it a slightly thicker two millimeter. I haven't measured it, I haven't put the caliper on it, um, so I don't exactly know. Um, but as long as it covers the, uh, the white of the inside of the fuselage, I'm happy. So that's where we're, uh, we're going with it. So you can just sort of just match everything up. What will happen when you, when you come to the, the front here is that the bottom section here should fit nicely and in parallel along the, the, the bottom of the frame there and that Similarly, at the top, you should have the frame just and, and the fuselage skin just uh, coming up above these little parts here, our red uh, detents. So we can do this whole assembly in a, a number of stages. So the first stage is to actually just um, pop it onto the keel, like so. And then we'll start bringing the uh, sides up and put them into place. So all we need to do is put some glue along the keel and out on the formers too. Like so I am using the glue as sparingly as I dare as weight on the tail means more weight that we have to put on the nose to get things balanced out. So when it comes to sticking things on the tail, less is more. Obviously this is quite easy to, uh, to eyeball. If you uh, I can see that my rear former here is probably slightly wide at the bottom. It's probably a uh, symptom of having slightly thicker foam on the, uh, on the fuselage because it's basically being pushed out. I'm just going to push that back in. 
There's no need to sand it or cut it. It's, uh, because the foam is nice and squashable, you can just give it a, a squeeze and it should certainly stay in place long enough for us to, uh, to get things um, put together. So, that's all nicely adhered now. I can now start looking at bringing the, the, the sides up. And there are a couple of things to note when we do the sides. Firstly, um, the, the side piece here that comes up against that final former, um, that should sit fairly flush with the top of that former, like so. And then obviously this rear piece here should, certainly when it, when it touches the rear of the keel, it should be almost level with uh, or there or thereabouts on the, uh, the back edge of the keel piece, like so. And as you can see, these, two edges that we've sanded come together um, and so with that bevel in there you should get quite a sharp join um, with very little in the way of a uh, white edge from the uh, from the foam itself so 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 we essentially we, what we're going to do is we're going to take the fuselage up to this former here, which is the, the back of the cockpit, um, to attach the fuselage. And then the forward part, we're just going to bend it away slightly so we can get our adhesive in, and we're going to do that at a separate stage. So what we need to do is apply glue. And obviously, we apply glue down the, uh, the formers themselves. Um, but also we need to apply some to the, the back edge here so it sticks to the uh, to the keel and we also need to put glue onto the edges that are going to come together back here as well and all keeping in mind that we want to do it sparingly so Just going to put some on that side as well. I'm putting it on really sparingly so that I can put it onto both sides. And then sum up the sides of the formers. So and we'll do these edges here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one edge. And then I am going to bring those two edges together so that the glue is transferred from one to the other. And then let that fall apart and we will use the grab of the glue once it's dried to, uh, to bring those two edges together. So in the meantime I might actually just do some glue transfer on the uh, other parts as well. There we go. So while that's drying, let's just do the other side. go so we'll just pop that to one side for now let the glue dry for a few minutes and then we'll come back and uh, start the assembly of the sides onto the uh, frame 
<laughs> okay. Let's get this done. So, we'll start on the side that I glued first. So, when you bring it up to this former here, you want this top part here, certainly at the bottom of the uh, the bevel, um, to be pretty much in line with the corner of that part there. There we go. I'm not going to worry too much about this one at the moment. Um, but what I am going to do is obviously make sure that our parts come together there and that they are sitting in the right place against the former there. So I'm just gently pushing all those together. Making sure that form is sitting where it should be too. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. It's coming away. Not that. Let's try again. Spoke too soon. All right, laid down as well. Okay, let's do the other side now. Because the aim here is to get the fuselage as even and square as possible. So It's important they sit evenly on both sides. There we go. So once that's done, we can concentrate on um, just finishing off the area down here where the uh, the two edges come together. Now I'm actually going to use my ball tool, um, which is actually either a uh, that you can you can find these in. Uh, in craft shops that do cake decorating or clay modeling um, and uh, they come in various sizes but this one seems to be quite versatile it's got a sort of a small um, uh, ball on one one end and a slightly larger ball on the other I'm going to just use the larger ball just to press on the edge bring those two edges together. What we're trying to achieve here is um, to basically minimize the amount of, um, of the white foam that's actually seen. The other trick that I use is just using the back of my nail. Just That's quite good because you can feel the amount of pressure that you're actually adding to The added advantage of using the steel ball is that if there is any excess glue that's squidged out, it usually picks it up and and uh, balls it up so that you can just wipe it off. There we go. That all looks good. I 
Okay, now we can turn our attention to the front of the aircraft. And you may need to manipulate this slightly just to get it into the uh, the right place. Um, but as I said before, as long as it comes up to pretty much flush with the front, or certainly the uh, the, the plywood anyway, um, that's where you want it to be. And when it's curved on, you need the plywood to to sit in line with the the curve that's produced by the front of the uh, of the part. So that um, this may need a bit of uh, tweaking of that front just to bring it in line. And also, as I said before, trying to keep the top of the, uh, the skin um, in line with, or slightly above with that 45 degree bevel, the, uh, the D10 parts and the sides of these parts down here as well, or that part down there as well. So, uh, so we can now turn our attention to the front of the aircraft. Um, what we can do now is just add some glue after we've done a bit of dry fitting. So. Just going to make sure that I'm happy with where everything's sitting. Taking note of, we've got a bit of an, uh, an overlap here on the um, on the part. That's fine. That uh, that's what, how it's supposed to be. Um, and that it's all fitting up here, okay. Okay, so let's just add some glue. Just going to bend this back slightly so I can get the nozzle in. And because we're in front of the uh, center of gravity now, I can be a little more generous with the application of the glue. So there we go. Now, I'm just going to transfer glue over onto the skin. The areas I need it to sit. Like so. Then let it fall away again. Probably just hold that away from the fuselage whilst we get a little bit of uh, drying going on. So I'll just put my finger there, and then that means I can do the other side as well. go. Just bring that into position as well. Transfer the glue over. If I get any on my hands, I need to rub that off before I touch the aircraft again. Otherwise I'll transfer glue onto the skin of the fuselage, which I don't want to do. If I do, if it does happen, then we can actually obviously get it off. Um, but uh, if we don't do it in the first place, then that's uh, a much better tactic.
So I'm just maneuvering our first side into uh, into place, making sure we've got it positioned correctly. Seems pretty good to me. So I am now going to hold that in place. You could actually use some tape um, to keep uh, to keep the skin up against the uh, various parts. But I'm just going to use some finger pressure and then just make sure that it's all sitting correctly whilst it dries. So whilst it's doing that, I'll uh, pause the video and uh, we'll come back once that's um, good and set. So the, uh, the skin's been drying under my supervision. <laughs> um, now I'm just using a little bit of additional pressure with the ball tool and also it's useful I did get a little bit of uh, glue on the fuselage as well just making sure that everything is stuck down where it should be The wall tool is actually also very good just to, you can scoot it down the, uh, the lines of the scores like so and it tends to uh, soften it a little. Obviously don't press too hard but it um, softens that, uh, that fold. So there we go, that's our fuselage, well that's uh, the, certainly Z1 in place now. We can still play around with the, the fit and finish, but I'm quite happy with where everything is sitting. Obviously if you're not, use a little bit of the lighter fluid to uh, enable you to uh, either remove the skin entirely and go again or just take uh, parts off so that you can uh, maneuver them into uh, a, uh, a better position so there we go you can see how that's sitting there on the fuselage right next step is to get the uh, the turtle deck on so that is z2 which is this part here once again we have some scoring and we have some beveling to do
So let's bring on the scoring and beveling guide. You can see it there, Z2. And uh, of course, it's a fairly straightforward straight bevel all the way down. Um, sorry, a, a straightforward score all the way down. It sort of fans out slightly. And the bevel is literally down these two sides here um, because they are going to be fitting right there onto our fuselage. So let's put that bevel in first. I'm just going to do a, uh, a hand held bevel. Sure that there's a bevel at the at the bottom here where it all comes into contact with the curves and the uh, former etc. The other thing you can do before we put the uh, the scores in um, is that obviously there's a, a white edge here at the edge of um, what is the cockpit combing. Now using the uh, the small ball, you can actually just go around there and push that down a bit, and that just reduces the white edge slightly. Okay, let's put the uh, scores in. So once again, it's a process of popping the part with the blank side facing up and then using the guide, pop in these scores. You notice how shallow I'm keeping the knife, so I don't go through the material. I'm just putting the uh, the dent in it, basically. There we go. And just once again, I'm just going to push that down. There we go. So now. We just make sure that each of those scores is flexed. If you find one of isn't flexing, don't be afraid to just give it another quick push through. I can see the score, so that's why I'm doing it off the guide. But, um, I'm 
on this particular aircraft the the greater curve is at the the top here and it sort of flattens out as it goes to the back so once again if you wanted to you could put a little um, additional scores um, where you've got the which is essentially it's a, a plywood covering in the real thing um, which has a more of a curve um, the uh, the aircraft down at this section here is obviously covered in canvas so you can see the um, the stringers as they run down the fuselage so it's uh, quite realistic having those scores like they are but um, yeah if you wanted to make this uh, a little more uh, rounded you could actually put some additional scores on the inside up to up to around about that point there so you can mark that with a pencil and uh, in fact let me show you that let's um, let's do that this is a sort of a bit of a an additional building tip, but um, so, so it's around about that point there. I'm putting the pencil mark there, and then I'm just going to pre-hand these in between the existing scores. Smack bang in the middle, I'm trying for. And then making sure that they bend too. So there we go. And then our, our ball tool, once we've got this in place our ball tool that will help us to even things out there a little bit there we go right now to attach the uh, the deck so it's quite easy to envisage where it's going to go um, that curve there matches up with the curve at the bottom of the, of the base of the fuselage there um, and this section here just sits across the top like so. Now this former here for me is poking up a little bit too much so I'm just going to shave that down if I can. Just taking a very small amount off. There we go. So we've got a, a better fit. And then to make things easy for ourselves, I'm actually going to glue it in that position to start off with. And that means our join here is hopefully pretty much free of any white line from the uh, the side of the foam. So I'm just going to put the glue onto this uh, port side. Run a bead all the way down. Now for the tail, I'm being a little bit generous here, but this is actually for both sides. I'm going to use that glue as it is to transfer over the glue onto the other edge. Like so. Right, so I'm going to let that dry, and then we'll come and attach that part to uh, to the fuselage. So I've let this dry for a little while now. So let's go in here. We've got to make sure our positioning is uh, is pretty accurate. Make sure the 
edges line up nicely. So I'm now going to use a little bit of pressure to bring those two these two sides together as well. This is a a bit of burnishing basically. This where we push the sides together. I'm only using a sort of very gentle amount of pressure. It's here down here that it needs a little more. It tends to spring out because it's not exactly in the right position at the moment. And hopefully that will bring more of the glue in contact, holding this part a lot firmer. Go. See, we're going to have to do a little bit of work down here. There's a little bit of white showing, but I'll, that's to be expected. Um, it's a quite a difficult area to manage. I'm just going to push a little bit of material outward there, make it easier. We actually may put a little bit of glue into that part as well. And just using a little bit of wire to push it into the areas that I need it. And that's just so those two parts will eventually stick together well. There we go. So the next uh, step is to obviously roll this all the way around and bring it together with the other side. Uh, once again, hitting that point where both of the white edges on both sides get covered up with that uh, bevel in place. And obviously the other thing we can do while we're doing that is just glue put a little bit of glue onto the tops of the formers so that the, uh, the part also sits on there too. So I'm just putting a little bit of glue, I'm just putting a dab, I'm not going all the way over. There we go. But I am going to put a bead around the edge of our turtle deck. So a little on the former right at the back there. So you are likely to get glue on your hands doing this, but um, just obviously this is just a transfer of glue from one side to the other. And the area you feel needs a little bit extra, like we had this difficulty down here on the other side. Just going to put a little bit extra down there. And a little bit on the other side too. There we go. So now once again, let that dry off. Um, and, uh, and come back to it uh, once we have that uh, the, the grab of the uh, the immediate grab of the of the glue. Uh, the other, of course, the other thing you can do once again is if you have uh, a low tack tape, um, you could actually put this in place now and with the low tack tape just tape it into place where you need it. So uh, it's uh, various tactics um, to uh, to skin. The fuselage. There's more than one way to skin a fuselage. I think the uh, 
saying doesn't go. But, uh, but there we go. Right. Okay. Come back to that once the glue is dry. Right. Let's bring these two bits together. There we go, that was quite painless. And uh, our little strategy of putting a little bit of extra glue there seems to have worked. And we can continue with our burnishing. And also the picking up of excess glue. You can actually feel the glue on the, uh, on the seam because it drags. No, I don't tend to press very hard. Um, I just repeat the process. Um, as you can see, there is there's absolutely no white line there at all um, from the uh, foam coming together, which makes for a uh, a much better, more realistic looking model. Using the uh, back of the thumbnail method, or fingernail, I should say. Well, that's all looks rather nice now. Excellent. So. Now we've got the uh, the fuselage uh, covered, we can now turn our attention to the tail feathers. So for the tail feathers for this aircraft, uh, we're going to need several parts. We're going to need something from the uh, the sticker sheet. Uh, we're also going to need to bring on the wing sheet as well. There we go. And uh, we've also got some carbon fibre that should be in your little pack here. We open up. There should be a strip in there. This is not the. Um, this is not a, a rounded part. This is actually a strip. It's about uh, one millimetre across by 0 0.4, 0 0.5 millimetres deep. So it's, uh, it's a small sort of flexible piece, and that should be long enough fit onto the front of D9, which is the elevator. But we'll come back to that later, but that part you'll find in this bag here. And it's also, it's the same sort of material um, that you, you get in the larger bag here. You can see it uh, looped around there. That's a 500 millimeter strip of it, um, but you get a separate piece um, specifically for the uh, the elevator itself. So those are the parts we need. Let's get uh, cutting out. Um, we're going to need uh, D8 and D9. Now on these parts, there's no. Uh, beveling required, but there is a little bit of a trick that we can do that's uh, been learned recently. Okay. So, before we do anything, just to stabilize this part, because obviously it's got a very weak spot right in the middle there, we are going to pop the carbon fiber along the leading edge. So the leading edge is the wider edge from there to there. 
and we're going to do it so that the one millimeter face of this carbon fiber actually sits flat against the front face of the foam there too. So I'm just going to make sure that the foam's flat so that it takes the carbon fiber nicely. There we go. And then all we need to do is run a bead of glue. Very thin light bead because we are thinking its tail it's got to be light. Along there, especially in the areas of that weak spot in the middle. The other thing this bit of carbon fiber does that it um, stops too much twist because the control um, the control arm sits on one elevator, not both. Um, obviously, you're relying on the rigidity of the part uh, to lift the elevator on the other side as well as on this side with the control horn being there so I'm just this this is just a little bit longer than the uh, than the elevator requires so but I'm going to stick it let it dry and then I'll chop that bit off once it's uh, once it's dried so that's all along there now. I don't have too much in the way of glue squidging out. What I do have is, uh, I should be able to clear with one of these balls. There we go. So whilst that's drying off, my little tip here is using the uh, the ball tool. Um, the I'm using the, the larger of the two. I'm just going to go around and compress the edges of the tail surfaces that we've got cut out here. So I get a nice even compression all the way around that edge, flip it over, do the same on the other side. And what this does is obviously pushes the, the printed area closer in so that we have a much reduced white line along the edge, but also because it's a flying surface, um, it may also add some aerodynamics to the whole equation. I say may because, um, well, we haven't um, tested it particularly to see whether that is the case. So that's the um, horizontal stabilizer done. We can do exactly the same here on the elevator. Go. Good. So that's done now. Let's just chop off that excess. You see there, I'll show you. Just slight excess of carbon fiber there at the tip. So chop that off. Okay. So now we can actually attach elevator and the horizontal stabilizer together 
Um, and the way we do that is through the uh, the hinge itself. So uh, the hinges themselves are S five, six, seven, and eight. And you can see by the state of them, the graphics on them, that um, S5 and S8 sit on the outside, and S6 and S7, which are a little grubbier, sit on the uh, the inside. We haven't actually got any defined positions for them to go, um, but you can just follow my lead on that, really. So... I'm going to do is I'm going to you've got a, a line that you can see in the middle of uh, that's uh, S5 and that obviously represents where the hinge line is so you can line that up like so I put this out towards the uh, the edge not right to the edge but um, fairly close so I'll take S8 now and do that on the other side in a uh, similar position. Right, so, okay. Stop down. And then S6 and S7 we put towards the uh, inside. There we go. I'm here I'm actually covering over that uh, hole that the um, control horn is going to go through. Um, what I can do is before I put these on, I can just pop the knife through from the other side just to show its position and then just open it up from this side so that when we come to put the control horn in place, we've still got that slot there for it to go into. There we go. So when we bring these together, what we want is around about a uh, between a half mil and a mil gap between the uh, the parts. This allows it to flex up as well as down. Um, and the good gauge of that is if you actually flip it over and have a look. There we go. So I can actually then just use a little bit of pressure using the ball tool. If you use the smaller ball tool, increase the pressure point. Excellent. Good. So the other thing we can do on this, we've got a central slot here. Um, and this is actually for the vertical stabilizer to sit in. And you might need to open it out just slightly. It's supposed to be around about a, a millimetre. It's worth just running the knife. What I'm doing is I'm putting uh, pressure using on the um, the back edge of the knife rather than on the blade. So I'm not actually removing any material. I'm just pushing it to one side just to widen the gap slightly. There we go. So now we can actually position this in place. It should actually just sit there on the back of the fuselage. Um, and the hinge line should be around about where the back of the paraphernalia on the tail skid sits. 
In fact, there should be a little, there should be a little um, notch just here that you'll be able to see in the uh, in the cut. And that should actually take the there's a little elevated nodule there it should go it should sit into that little gap like so and that should come up square on the uh, the turtle deck at the back um, I also suggest taking a sort of a visual look around the aircraft as well just to make sure that everything is sitting as it should and also check from the uh, from the rear as well to see that the horizontal um, <coughs> excuse me frog in my throat the horizontal stabilizer um, is sitting horizontal to the vertical of the uh, of the fuselage if not then you might need to sand down one of these sides um, to, uh, to 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 adjust that um, but uh, it's all worth checking before you go forward with the uh, with actually attaching the uh, the um, assembly to the fuselage. So mine seems to check out well. So I'm going to pop some glue onto the areas of the fuselage skin. It's going to come into contact. And also down the central keel there too, and also some on the just the top of that uh, tail skid arrangement. So, just going to use that tail skid part at the back there just to locate into that notch, just to make sure it's where it should be. Just check all my alignments to order up and basically checking that the, um, the, the horizontal, the vertical of the fuselage is met by the horizontal of the horizontal stabilizer. So just by sort of holding it up. Checking, just need to tweak that a little bit. Okay, that looks absolutely fine. So we can now put that to one side to dry off on a flat surface, I should say, as well. So it's not biased in any way. Um, and then we can turn our attention to the rudder and vertical stabilizer so we're looking at d10 and d11 actually before we do that there is something we must do and that is s4 s4 is the hinge sticker for the rudder and it actually uses that last just get that out of the way it uses that um, rod that runs down at the sort of final part of the tail skid arrangement just there it uses that to attach to uh, as an anchor point so S4 is what we need and you'll notice on S4 there's a graphic and then basically it's two sort of stripes, black stripes, just there. And what we're going to do is we're going to thread that end that has the black stripes, or white stripes, depending on how you look at it. We're going to use that and insert that between the backstay 
and that piston that's uh, emulated there. We're going to insert it so that it is around about that far through, as you can see there. Now, let's move into a position where it makes this obvious, hopefully. If I fold this forwards and over like that, you'll notice that, that one of those white lines and black lines lines up with the graphic on the back stay there. And that actually is where it should fold. And the other side should fold back on itself and secure in position on that back stay. So let's just encourage it to do that. So there we go, I pressed it together and didn't stay on that, that type, but that is where that little sticker should now reside, just there. And that acts as a hinge, uh, securing the bottom of the rudder to the fuselage, like so. So I can actually use the, use the tweezers just to firm things up a bit. Just checking I had it on the right side <laughs> and uh, the right way up, but there we go. So. That is where your little S4 sticker sits um, to act as the hinge for the rudder, certainly below the uh, horizontal stabilizer. Right, that done. Let's get our D10 and D11 free from the, uh, the sheet. Go. Now, immediately we can do a few things here. Firstly, I'm just going to make sure that that line there is nice and flat. I'm also going to, this is that little tab here, is the bit that goes through the, uh, the slot centrally um, in the, uh, on the horizontal stabilizer. So what I'm going to do is just run the ball tool down the front edge of that um, just to bring it to a bit of a point essentially so it goes into that slot nice and easily and of course the other thing we can do with this ball tool is once again flatten down those edges like so and over go at it the other side as well. Okay. And we can do the same to the uh, the rudder. Let's remove that white edge as much as possible. And as I said, maybe introduce some uh, more favourable aerodynamics to the model. There we go. So, whilst we're here, we have another sticker that we uh, need to use, and that's another hinge sticker, which is S9. Go S9, and we should be able to line up that with the graphics that we've already got on there. So that looks pretty good to me. Just there. Let's just try again. Okay. 
we go. And then I'm actually going to leave that like it is, and I'm going to put the vertical stabilizer in place, albeit just as a, a bit of a practice run, like so. And obviously what you're looking for is that the back edge of the vertical stabilizer lines up with the back edge of the horizontal stabilizer, which it does. So that's good. So what we can do now is actually just pop our rudder into place. Like so once again, leaving about a, a one or 0.5 to one mil gap between the two, put it nicely lined up so that the curve of the stabilizer goes to the, uh, the rudder as well. So now that should go there, but what I'm going to do now is just add some glue to the base of this part so that when we bring it together, we're doing it on a permanent basis. Go. So let's stop them and make sure you you keep the um, the rudder to the right hand side of the sticker. So like like so. So that's actually going to cover over that slot there. But that's all right because we're using the other side. So and then just pop our rudder into place like so. And we can push firm the uh, hinge sticker at the bottom there as well, making sure we maintain that gap so that the rudder will actually flex. And then the last part of this process is just to make sure that the rudder and horizontal stabilizer are sitting upright and horizontal. And you can actually check the, the 90 degree angle that it should be by just popping a steel rule in place. So I just I need to flex that over just a little bit that way. Yeah, that looks very good now. So everything's in place. So there we go. That's our tail feathers attached to. Just bring that up so that you can see more clearly what's uh, what's going on. We've got those hinges in place. There we go. Fantastic. Good. Right. So all we need to do now to finish off, once these tail feathers are dry, is we can put the control horns in place as well. To create the um, control horns, we're going to need the parts uh, P6 and P5 to start off with. So let's free them from their shackles. Go. Now you'll notice on the arm part of these little control horns um, that down the center you have a score and that allows you to fold this over like so. Um, but before you do that, it's worth checking the inside of those holes and just scrape a knife over them um, because sometimes when the laser goes through, it just leaves a, 
little bit of debris there as the uh, plastic melts back. So just make sure they're smooth. You can also give them a quick sand as well on the inside just to make sure that's flat. Um, and then what we need to do is fold that part over so that it forms a nice strong control horn. So let's just pop some glue on the inside there, avoiding getting it in the, uh, in the holes if possible. What we can do though is after we've glued it, if there is any glue, we can just push a wire through them and uh, that usually removes the glue. So I'm just going to let the glue dry on that um, before folding it over. And whilst we're here, we might as well do the other two as well, P7 and P8, which I extracted earlier, and do exactly the same with them. So, fold that over. Like so let's just get some glue on that. A bit generous. And then we'll let that dry off too. There we go. Okay, let's just bring this one together. And then that should go through. You can see on this, on the base plate, there's a slot, and the bottom of the arm should actually go through that slot. Right the other side. And then, so you've got your base plate with a little tab now poking out and your control arm on the other side. So whilst we're here, we might as well just make sure that the holes are free of glue. So I've just got a little bit of, uh, of wire here. Just run that, run that through. Think there was any glue in there and through the upper one as well. We'll probably start off using the upper one actually um, when we come to rig the aircraft up. Okay, so that's that done. Now, which one is this? So, ah, this is the elevator. So the base plate is uh, the color of the underside of the aircraft, and the blue is the blue of the um, fin or the rudder at the back. So what you can now do is just push that tab into the slot in the elevator. That's where it should go. And if it happily sits there, then we can take it off, pop some glue onto the underside of the base plate, and then just pop it into position. There we go. Go. So I can actually feel that tab slightly protruding the other side, which is exactly what you want. And obviously, that base plate there, what you want is it to be uh, completely flat against the underside of that um, that material. Okay. So over to the other side now. In preparation for putting our other control horn in, what I'm going to do is. On this side where I can see the slot I'm just going to put the knife through because the sticker is on the other side so we'll actually be scoring that sticker as well
go. Well, that just means that it won't. Sit, well, it will sit properly into place rather than getting caught up on the uh, on the sticker itself. So let's fold our control horn together like so. This looks like it's got a little bit more glue than uh, than the last one in those holes. So let's just push through. Just the act of dragging it. Should remove the uh, the glue. There we go, and then we get our base plate. And we need to work out which way round we put our base plate because there's a little bit of a graphic on it. We've got a white tip at the back here, which should represent the white of the uh, the markings on the uh, on the rudder itself so we're going to put the that white bit at the back and put the troll horn facing forward like so so let's just check that that pops into the slot Well, I think that slot could do with opening up a little bit. So okay, I'm just going to use the tweezers on this one. It's just a little more difficult to get to with my big fingers. Seems to fit well now. Let's get that glue on. Get this popped in place too. Go. Okay, so happy with that. Oh, even the graphic lines up. Well, I never. <laughs> okay, excellent. Right, there's one last task that we have, and it is purely cosmetic. Um, you can still see the keel at the bottom there, so you will have a sticker on here. I believe it is uh, S32, and that should be the colour of the underside of your aircraft. And you literally just mask that off, like so. Use. little bit of the ball pressure just to uh, pop that into place. Is that slightly wonky? It is, isn't it? Well, we can't have that. That looks a bit better. There we go. Good. So, let's clear the decks. The, um, the next stage, I think it's going to be easier if we look at installing the electronics at this point. Um, 
and uh, and then we will move on to uh, to the lower wing. But certainly getting the control rods um, into the aircraft at this point is probably the best time to do it. Although you can still do it at the uh, end of the build, but it does require obviously getting access through the front here. Whereas we've got some open spaces at the moment that allow us to uh, get uh, get greater access to it. So uh, that's that's what we'll move on to.